Welcome. Welcome to Kelly Barrett's show. <laughs> it's the Halloween edition. <laughs> I love it. Welcome, everybody. We've got to love the humor already. Uh, thank you so much for popping in tonight, everybody. Welcome to Etc. Live. I'm your host, Kelly Barrett. Uh, happy Halloween. I am beyond thrilled to have, uh, I guess, a member of one of my favorite bands, one of the best bands to ever come out of Canada. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and announce him, singer, songwriter, guitar player, harmonica player extraordinaire, Brian Greenway of April Wine. Brian, hello. Hi, Kelly. How are you? I am wonderful. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. good. Sitting here. Good. I'd usually be in bed this time of night, you know, and because <laughs> my dog gets me up early. It's, it's a COVID dog. And... Oh, now that oh, we're okay, sort of gotcha. back at work again, he uh, he he's he's got me trained to do everything he wants to do. Now when I want to do stuff, he says, "Oh no no, <laughs> you're going to play ball and you're gonna go to have a nap now and you're gonna sleep now and now you're getting up." Now you're getting and up to it. He's a lab, right? Is he a lab? You were saying chocolate, a chocolate, yeah. Nice. And he uh, gets upset when I come down the basement. He won't come down the stairs. Otherwise, I'd love him to be just lying here, sitting next to me like a. No, an LL Bean picture, but uh, he won't come down the stairs. He'll go up the stairs, top stairs, but he won't come down in the basement. Weird, and it would not be the first time we had a dog make a cameo appearance on at Central Life. So that would have that would have been absolutely. You know what, Brian? I think that when you're talking in using your dog's voice, you should use the Scottish accent. I, yeah, I, hey, the dog's uh, that chocolate lab. <laughs> <laughs> woof, woof, he says. <laughs> he, is, we were... he is a treat. He is a treat right now. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's bang on. A few viewers, uh, Brian and I were, were, were doing accents before the show. Well, Brian was doing accents, and uh, apparently he also speaks French, so I heard a little French. No, I don't. Not much. No, no I, I, I speak Christopher Walken French, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's very easy. Everything is a, a different word. <laughs> wow. You're a man of many talents, Brian. <laughs> uh, it's... I'm a bit of a chameleon. I just sort of see something and copy it the same way with playing guitar and, and singing, I think. Right. So, you know, we're going to definitely talk about your guitar playing tonight. And uh, the, the comments are already flying in here. Uh, hey, Doug Corbin, good <laughs> to see you. Hi, Gary Edmondson, local musician. I kind of figured he'd be here. Uh, yes, yeah, the, the viewers were really excited about this show. Tell us how your summer was. How was your summer, Brian? Uh, well, there was a lot of grass cutting. <laughs> It's, Not it's, very legal, it's legal now. <laughs> no, it's legal now. You can cut your grass. You can't, <laughs> you, but you can't water it. Apparently, right? <laughs> the uh, uh, a lot of ball playing with the dog. We did. Uh, we, we had fifteen shows. Actually, we had twenty shows to do this starting early in the spring, and then uh, July first, I got COVID, and two days later, Roy got COVID. So that July first show was canceled. And two weeks later, Miles got COVID and Richard got COVID. So uh, Prince George and Prince Rupert, hey, the two princes, I guess it was, it was right. Grand Forks perhaps, got canceled as well. It was, you know, two days before the show. So these people were scrambling to to rebook the headliner. Oh, no. So, with the, with that, so now that's three shows done. And uh, who knows if we got four left to three next week in Ontario and then one again on the November 12th. And then that's it for the year. Right. Uh, Cause we don't like to travel, travel in the winter. And, and I don't thank God you. we're not doing us this year because of the, just the traveling in the air and the airlines and the lost baggage and, and lineups and cancel flights. Even in Canada, we experienced that in our short little trips we did. Yeah. It's a nightmare. I've, I've had some guests on that actually had to like cancel shows because they're, they're, they're at the airport for two days. And so, and yeah. And who wants to try oh, yeah. in the winter? I don't blame you one. I don't blame you one bit. I, uh, speaking I, of, the, of the whole COVID and thank God everybody, you know, obviously recovered well from it. Um, I, yes. I, I saw April wine in Calgary earlier, like last April. And it was kind of funny that you mentioned the COVID thing because they had just sort of set the mandatory mask. Uh, rule in oh, place yes. uh, at the casino, um, but they didn't tell a lot of people about it, and like a lot of people had no clue. They it, it was it came up on Friday that it was going to be implemented Monday, but the Friday night right. show they decided to implement it, and so it was almost a riot outside the concert of 
people that were getting turned away because they were there and yeah. there was pe people with front row seats that were just livid because they're finally getting to see their idols and um yeah and i was oh, yeah it was it was do you remember that it was yeah. terrible yeah because the show was delayed by about 45 minutes because right. they couldn't get people inside for checking everything and they didn't want to do it but it was the, it was the uh, protocol for the uh, province Absolutely, yeah. And uh, some people just were uninformed. And I went with a group of four, and two of us weren't vaccinated. I was, and my friend was. And, it, you know, there's that moment where you feel like, you know, maybe we should do the nice thing and just not go to the show and stay with our friends. And then we thought, nah, oh, no, you go in. No, please, I'm going please. to April Wine. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry about your luck. Get vaccinated. Go gamble. Go get drunk. I'll catch you later. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, well, maybe they would have done the same thing. I don't know. I'm sure they would have. And, you know, at the end, it was all good. And uh, so, you know, I, I almost hate asking this question because I'm sure somebody with a career as, as successfully long as yours has been with April Wine, you probably get so tired of being asked it. But people really do know, want to know, how do you, what, why was music, how did music become your choice in life? And what, what age are you when you decide? Um. My parents uh, were amateur opera singers. Oh, wow. And it's a good thing I didn't know that at the time. Otherwise, I never would have started music. I hate <laughs> opera. <laughs> but they had, but because of that, they had great voices. And my mom sang in the choir, and I sang in the church choir. She ended up being the soloist in our church for many, many years. She had a great voice. Anytime I hear any, you know, out, uh, contralto or whatever on, uh, on, on the radio or something, someone singing a hallelujah chorus or soloist. It sounds just like my mom, you know, she had such wow. a great voice and she's, she's still alive. She's 99 now, but she's in a home. Wow. And uh, maybe I'll live to 99. I Good won't genetics. know anyone, but um, <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so I remember my first time uh, in Denver, Colorado in about 1958, I did a little talent show for my cousins and that, and I got real excited and really high about it. And I, I started doing singing in churches and stuff for the talent shows. And and then I wanted to be a disc jockey and a, and a drummer. And then I was a big Beach Boys fan before uh, the Beatles came out. And then the Beatles came out. And of course, we all went to school with our hair up in the morning and all down in the afternoon across our foreheads. <laughs> and we all and we all started bands, even though nobody could play. I had a four piece band and we would play tennis rackets on the balcony of my apartment building on the fourth floor uh, with a record player blaring Beatles songs and everybody looking up at us in the gas station below like we were crazy. <laughs> and, uh, and I kept I, I just kept at it, you know. And, and I was enjoying it. And, and luckily, I got some breaks and uh, I ended up where I was. And so you joined April Wine in what year was it that you joined in? Like from well, the beginning? 19, 1977, <laughs> I think it was. <laughs> just, and just, just, just. Just, just after something happened, I don't know what it was. So, <laughs> a very, very terrible, a very terrible thing. Uh, May of 77. Oh, May 77. May of 77. And, and you've been with the band yeah. ever since, except for when they were on a break. You were, you've been there. And... We, ha we had an eight-year hiatus where we right. somehow lost everyone's phone number. And we couldn't get in touch with each other. And it was uh, one of those strange alien events. But before that, I was in, this whole sort of started with a band called Cheek in C-H-E-E-Q-U-E -E -E in 1968, where they had, they were like a Chicago style band. And Steve Lang was the bass player in that band. Now, the, one of the horn players had to have an operation where he couldn't, play anymore for a while so they got me in the band and it worked well and then Cheek broke up and Mash Buchan had broken up too in 72 so Pierre Seneca grabbed me Lord Nearing and Steve Lang to join the second edition of Mash Buchan so this was the second band now that I was in with Steve Lang and that lasted until 73 in 74 or 5 Steve joined April Wine and and I joined in 77. So Steve 
sort of preceded every band that I eventually joined from 68 until I joined in 77. It was interesting how that worked. So that were, those were my lucky breaks, and he was my lucky star, I guess. God bless him. Oh, wow. He passed away a few years ago. Right. And so I went wondering... to high school with him. Wow. So that's a long friendship. That's a. Yeah. That's, yeah, yeah. yeah. And so when you join. But it was a life... matter of. Go ahead. It was a matter of luck, you know, being there. I remember being down at the Maple Inn, which was an old rowdy bar roadhouse type thing in Montreal. And Steve comes up to me and says, has Miles called you yet? <laughs> and I went, no. Why? <laughs> Just, oh, <laughs> I, he'll call you. I go, oh, okay. <laughs> tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me. <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah. And, he, and he called me and uh, asked if I wanted to join the band for the summer tour. And if it worked out, I'd become a member of the fifth member. Now, in 1973, I'd gone to having a, a meeting with Miles to join the band when the Henmans left. But Gary Moffat got the job instead. But so four years later, I, I joined. And so is that surreal for you in that when you get that phone call from Miles? Because are you a fan? Of, are you a fan already? I, I was, yeah, because I was uh, I was working in a warehouse at the time and we had the FM station on and then the album Forever For Now had just been released and I was loving it, you know, and and ended up playing those songs. And I and with Mash McCann, with Pierre Seneca and now and Nichols in the band, we had toured with April Wine. And so I got to know them. And in fact, the first time I saw April Wine was <laughs> oh in Quebec City at this one of these church all night long indoor winter festivals. And it was a snowstorm and everybody got snowed in and somebody brought in garbage bags full of weed. And people were <laughs> Getting so stoned, every pe people ran out of cigarettes. So they and they were smoking weed, and finally they got sick of that. You know, and, and April Wine came on at four o'clock in the morning. That was the first time I saw them. I was there playing with uh, with with Cheek, in fact. And, uh, but nobody could leave once they got there because of the snowstorm. So it was I, there was my uh, my introduction to April Wine. Wow. Just, and so what's it like joining an already established band? Was there, was there a little bit of pressure there or did you just kind of find that you just kind of slid right Well, there's in? no pressure. F there's no pressure for promotion because the band's already successful. Yeah. yeah right. Yeah. Um, it, it, it was creating my own space, creating my own space because they had two great guitar players with Miles and Gary Moffat and very different styles. And I had a third style. It was, there we go we're back there we go <laughs> yeah i can't i'm trying to turn off this 30 minute thing on the camera i don't know how i'm not successful with it and uh so it was creating myself and at the same time we went in after the summer tour to record uh, the rest of uh, what turned out to be first glance and uh which i named i said we had a, a artwork oh, wow. And the and the two faces. I saw first glance. And they went, oh, that's a good name. Perfect. <laughs> so I said, so I had a, and I had a couple of songs in the record. So my first year in the band was very successful with naming the album, couple of songs, joining the band. Uh, I said, wow, it can only get better, you know. Right, and you're no slouch in the vocal department either, Brian. Because you, I mean, I've heard some of your vocals, and like before the dawn, was that during the early years that you sang that? Uh that what I wrote in 78 and it was on the uh oh what was it uh, uh harder faster album yeah we did that at Le Studio in Morn Heights which was a brilliant place to be right and so I'm wondering like how does it the first time you ever hear yourself on the radio with April Wine is your mind slightly blown yeah <laughs> I, 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 I mean, it was. Uh, it means that, oh, thank God I'm getting played on the radio. And wow, I'm really being played on the radio. It's, it's, yay, I'm doing it, you know? <laughs> 100%. Yeah. And I'm, I'm curious, yeah. what, was the, what was the writing process like for April Wine? What did it look like back then? And, and is, has it changed? I imagine with technology and, and whatnot, it has. But can you walk us through kind well, of the songwriting process? Well, Miles would write the songs on his own and he'd bring in ideas and we would 
learn them and add our own parts and it would develop that way. Right. Uh, so for like an example, like Roller, he came in with a lick and the chords and then we developed how the arrangement's going to be. Uh, stuff like Shine of the Gypsy Queen, well, it's already a song, but he added the middle section uh, the halftime section, which has a solo in it. And I said, I want that solo. And I fought for it. We recorded that at the Manor in England, Manor Studios, owned by Richard Branson. And I finally got it, got to do the solo. And he kept on walking in during me doing it with Mike Stone producing with plastic grapes in his pocket and a drink in his hand to try and, are you done yet? Oh, that doesn't sound so good. No. <laughs> Just trying to get my goat, you know. Like yeah, no, that's no how, that that but that yeah that he would write it on his own, you know, and he would get credit because that he was the writer. And uh, for me, uh, but my writing's not really a strong point. I, I have a lot of ideas, but I don't complete a lot of songs. So I have a lot of things lying around over the last 30, 40 years. That one day I keep burning out and saying maybe I'll I'll do something. Who knows? Right. And, but, and when you, when you took the eight year break or April Wine took the break and all the phone numbers were lost, you kind of ventured off and yeah. had a solo and you had a solo career during that time. I did. Right. I did. And, so, I, and what was that like? Was it, was it different working on your own as opposed to being with this group for so long? Was there certain challenges, you know, that go along with solo career versus playing with an established band? Well, once again, I got lucky because we were doing uh, an album with April Wine, I think it was called Walking Through Fire. I'm not sure. Anyway, but it was not April Wine. It was Marty Simon on drums and Jean Pellerin on bass, Daniel Barb on keyboards, myself on guitar. We recorded it at NASA at the Compass Point Studios across the street where Robert Palmer lived. And uh, uh, at night, we'd have studio time. So Marty would say, here's a song. Why don't you we'll play it and you sing it? And so he became my manager. And then he, I kept on working on songs when I got home in 1985 in the fall. And then he sold me to Bud Prager, who was handling Foreigner. He was, he was Foreigner's manager. And Bud financed the deal and got me signed with uh, Atlantic Records in, in New York. And then we proceeded to Record it up at List Studio and got all kinds of very interesting musicians on the record. Uh, Andy Newmark on drums and uh, some really great session people from Montreal. Jean Roussel, uh, Alda Nova was made some parts on it. Alex Lyson played the solo in the first single. Uh, and then we went to release it and they said, no, we're going to hang on to it for six months. And I said, oh, okay. What a letdown. Yeah. Meanwhile, Suzanne Vega and all the those type of artists was coming out and music was changing. So finally, when they released it, they turned to uh, WIA, Warner Electra Atlantic in Canada, and said, OK, we're going to release it throughout the world, but here you promote it. And they, I wasn't signed with them. I mean, Atlantic was a subsidiary of, of WIA, but... Uh, I went up and Bob Roper, who was handling, uh, who used to work at London and was and had the April Wine account, was the manager of uh, Honeymoon Suite also uh, at WIA. And he says, just because you signed with a big deal in the States doesn't mean we have any money to support you up here and do and, and, and promote it. So I thought, Bob, easy. Well, now, yeah, yeah. So they ended up, Kim Cook was the CEO of President of Capital then or WIA, and uh, not capital, WIA, and he said, okay, we'll do what we can. And he, he was a fan, but the thing is died, and it was such a good record. And so and so, do you still do any solo projects on the side? Or you're pretty busy with April Wine, I would imagine. Uh, I have a little, well, a little five-piece blues band. Blues bus, uh, right? Is that the blues bus? Yeah, yeah the blues bus, yeah. Yeah, which, yeah. Which, 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 which is a takeoff from... A band I had in high school called the Blue Bus, which was a name I stole from the Doors song, The End. You know, the Blue Bus is calling us, you know. Great. The Blue Bus is calling us. Father, yes, son. <laughs> <laughs> 
anyway, <laughs> I, and I and I had I, and I put together a little solo acoustic thing. Well, it was uh, I started off uh, with learning how to use a looper, and I got fed up with hitting trying to hit it so it would stop on time and not erase by taking my leaving my foot on it. So I finally just recorded all my looping parts at home and put them in the memory of the looper. And then when I with my acoustic guitar and, and I'd, I was, I said, come see me play with myself, you know, <laughs> and, and, and that and people did. And uh, I, I, it was kind of neat because I added uh, some drums to it and some percussion. And I became like a one man band type thing. Uh, it was fun. But then I got because I, I, I used to play alone when April Wine broke up solo and I hated it because it was just me. There was no one to do a rhythm part if I was soloing and sounds weird if you're just soloing and there's nothing underneath it you know right or bounce ideas off of even to have you know other people to bounce ideas off of and collaborate with and stuff yeah well I was, yeah. with the looper parts I would uh and I love blues so there was a lot of blues based stuff so I would record just the the one like the verse section and the four and five section I would play live for rhythm so when it came to soloing i could go on as long as i wanted because there was no changes coming up right so that was fun yeah that i could play a trumpet <laughs> <laughs> you know if you ever wanted a second career as an actor you could probably have one with all the voices you do <laughs> you should put on I a don't scottish know. album <laughs> uh, uh, great scottish christmas songs <laughs> Yeah. I awesome. hear secrets that yeah, I hear secrets that you keep when you're talking to your sheep. <laughs> I love it. I I can I can listen to that accent. You should just do the rest of the show with that accent. <laughs> oh no, cuz uh, that the truth anybody that's really a Scot, I mean I am half Scottish. The other half is is British from Manchester. Right? Um they they, they could get upset because they say, "Well, you're not really brogue, are you?" Right, yeah, right. We get yeah, some hate. We yeah. get some hate mail, and we are getting a lot of comments in. So I'm gonna get. To I, I bet you are. <laughs> <laughs> I, he owes me twenty dollars. Where is he? <laughs> right on. So, but first, I just want to give a huge shout out to my show sponsors, Writers and Rockers Coffee Company. I have here tonight's feature coffee is the Trooper Raise a Little Hell. So, Aha. Uh, yeah, and so they have a bunch of uh, rock star endorsed coffee brands on there. So check it out at www.writersandrockerscoffee.com. There's a question here for you. Um, where did it go? Uh, so my good friend, UC Uzmaki, says, hey, Kelly. Oh, he's telling me I look amazing. Thank you, UC. Uh, Brian, this part is for you. What was your inspiration behind Before the Dawn? Will always be one of my favorite songs in my heart. I don't know. I wrote that song in about 20 minutes. I sat down in between the hallway and the door frame of my townhouse and all of a sudden it came out. I was just the conduit. I was I was amazed as I was amazed that it happened. And, and just the whole song was right there in the lyrics. I wish I could do that every day. Right. But I can't. Yeah, insp inspiration is a weird thing, right? So it can come from the most unlikeliest places and it can come out of nowhere, or you can sit. Yeah. Until blood droplets form on your head, looking for an idea. Yeah, like, I've heard like it, that some some people talk about songwriting like that. That they're just the conduit. The song comes through them, out of their fingers, out under the guitar. They're just a conduit for it. I've heard that so many times from so many different artists. That that a song just appears and it's done, and twenty minutes later, there's a song. Yeah. Right. I've heard of stories of that before. Actually, uh, Drew Arnault from uh, Strange Advance was on the show. And of course, their big hit, We Run, he, he actually dreamt that. Kind of like what you were just referring to. He actually dreamt about it and woke up and wrote the song. And so, um, and yep. you know, speaking of songwriting, and then I'll get to some more comments here right away. I did have a question about songwriting because um, Miles was on the show last year and he, he had expressed great disappointment over the fact that April Wine has never been inducted into the Canadian Songwriters Hall of Fame, which I think is a crime. I Like how many freaking hits do you have to write to be inducted in? <laughs> but i but i digress i'm curious apparently what apparently apparently we haven't written enough yet right i don't know what are your thoughts on that i'm just curious well i didn't know that we weren't and 
Uh, I, well, I didn't mean to been... be the bearer of bad news. Oh, no, no it's just, I, I, I'm very sheltered. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't hang out with musicians. They're awful people. You know? <laughs> Always borrowing money. <laughs> Looking for places to stay. You know? Right. <laughs> yeah. Needing a ride to a show, you know. Yeah, maybe and a nice meal. My show. Yeah. <laughs> uh, five bucks. I think Miles is 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 in the songwriters. Uh, uh, see, what are they called? Uh, the K Pack or whatever it is. So can music call of fame for for writers. Right. But I I, I, I mean. We 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 got into the uh, Canadian Music Hall of Fame as and uh, what do they call the award uh, achievement award? Right, and deservedly so. Like deservedly so. I we were just chatting about. I mean, songwriting is like there's so many hit songs that were written, and so I I just was curious yeah. if you had any thoughts on that. But um, you know, and, no, and I, I, I I would imagine. I, I, go ahead. Go ahead. No, you no, you go ahead. It's your show. I was I was no no. I was just gonna say, you know, with all the accolades and you know, gold albums, platinum albums, awards, and all that, which I imagine are nice to get. But I guess my question to you, Brian, is what are you? And it you know, it can be aside from that or as well as that. What are you most proud of? You know, at the end of the day. Wow. I don't know. I it's mean, a tough I'm, one, I'm, right? I, I, I'm proud that I finally have a good marriage, you know, and I love my right. wife that I, after three, after two marriages, I'm proud of my daughters. Um, I, I'm, I'm pretty down to earth. I don't really dwell on anything, you know, I'm just happy I got through the day and maybe made some people smile and, and Played with the dog. Right, right. And has your perspective on life changed since COVID? Yeah, I still want people to stay six feet away from me. <laughs> <laughs> Good you answer. Know, I tell you, I tell you, <laughs> Kelly, when when COVID came around, my wife and I, we hang out together. We don't, we're like twins. Right. And it, it didn't bother us all this lockdown because we don't go out much anyway. For sure, uh, we, right. We, we, we uh, it was too bad in the winter that because we curl, uh, curling was canceled. Right. I didn't think I'd ever get into curling, but I, I, I kind of like it. You know? No, for sure, it keeps you busy during yeah. the winter. I, I, it was, it was something I was, it's something I surprisingly, I, I was pretty good at. I, I mean, I'm not a skip, right. and uh, I've fallen a couple of times, but uh, I, I. I'm, I'm, I'm happy with how, to, to learn something new that's totally different from what you're doing is a, is is re, is rewarding, you know. One hundred percent. Yeah, I think I think it changed for a lot of people. I think, and I think even if you're not a person that necessarily goes out a lot, I think there's a difference between choosing not to go out and being told that you can't. You know what I mean? And I think I think it changed people's perspective yeah. a lot on just what we take for granted, and you know the fact well, that we were lucky. Yeah, we were lucky because we we have a half acre lot here, and nice. it's very beautifully treed all around us, and uh, there was a lot of room to go out and 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 do what we do, you know, and play the play in the yard and and go cross country skiing or whatever when there's nobody around. So, and and the lockdown made it so you can't leave your property, right. but. Uh, I, I I went snowshoeing around the perimeters of my yard, making Good trails for the dogs, and that was fun. Yeah, yeah for sure. It's, it definitely helps to have half an acre when you're locked down, for sure. <laughs> and then, you know, um, don't ever you try know, to shovel it. No. <laughs> <laughs> you need to hire someone for that. <laughs> yeah. And so, um, right. you know, when I think about like seeing the show last year and and the shows that you guys are doing, I mean, it's very few bands that have this type of you know, mass appeal and longevity where people still want to hear the music and they, and they still want to come out to concerts. And I would imagine now there's two, maybe three generations in the audience. How does that feel? I, th I think maybe four. Is that right? Eh? Yeah. I, 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 I see some young musicians in the front. I can tell they're musicians and I know they're young because they're, they don't look like me, 
but they do what they're doing what i used to do was stand in front and watch the band and watch the guitar player and watch his hands and how did yeah. he do that right and that's how i learned to play i don't read a note of music i'm self-taught other than someone taught me my open chords but the rest i learned by lifting the needle on the record and learning the solo and going to see people and and just i guess have a, a a talent to stay with it whether it was working or not at the time right and and what do you think in your opinion brian what what makes a good rock song like what makes a song transcend time and you know one of the what is it about a song april wine songs that people still want to hear all these years later in your opinion i think it's a a memory of what you were doing at the time you first heard that song and everyone loves to be brought back to a time when they were happy right and a time that where they felt good about something you know or the people they were with i think that's what brings bands like us and songs uh that stay for a long time because people like to remember i would agree i think that's a great answer because it, it definitely you know when you think of music as the soundtrack to your life I think everybody can remember where they were when they first heard their first April Wine song or the first album. And, and I think you're right. It's a, it takes us back to a, me. It takes me back to a simpler time. And I remember I used yeah, to I, I, I used to steal my older sister's albums. And, and the first time I heard April Wine was when I heard uh, Weeping Widow. And oddly enough, I became obsessed with that song. And I think I was like 11. But I remember wow. a lot of people, a lot of people call that Weeping Willow. <laughs> Much you know, different meaning, right? Yeah. No, that's that's a that's a rush song, you know. <laughs> right, Weeping, yeah. Weeping Willow is a rush tune. There's trouble in the forest. There's a problem with the trees. So. Right, and who does that for you? The maple twat was said light and the oaks didn't grow their trees. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> excuse me. I was saying before the show, you'd be a fun guy to party with. You'd be fun to sit around with a group of people, and I'm sure you'd have everybody. Rolling on the floor with laughter. <laughs> laughter is the best medicine, you know. Wow. I mean, I'll, tonight I'll go to bed happy, and 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 my body will feel good, my mind will feel good because I I'm enjoying this. You know, it's not something I do every day. It'd be fun if you could, though. Wouldn't it? Hey, yeah. Well, we're enjoying yeah. having you. I, you know, Brian. Given the question I, I was just talking about, I have a question for you, and this goes back to you know these songs evoke memories in us, maybe to a simpler time. And I'm wondering who who does that for you. Which artists can kind of take you back or take you back to a simpler time or a happier time? Well, I've run out of Beatles stuff. It just doesn't do it to me anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I know too much about them. That's the problem uh, with, with video. And, and the more you know about a band, your initial... Uh, time you hear a band, like, a guy loved it before video, you know, because you wouldn't know what they look like. You didn't know what they, they what, you know, how they were. Uh, you made up your own mind what they were. And and there, right. and, and th then also there was a great expression, never meet your heroes because you'll be disappointed because they're what you thought they were like, which is not anything like they are at all. You don't have any idea what they're like. Right. So, so it never meets your heroes. What does it for me now? Uh, wow. The other day, I, I said, I'm going to listen to some stuff that completely out of the page. So I, I, I asked, hey, Siri, play some Patty Page. You know, how much is that doggy in the window? <laughs> 1951. That's when I was born. That's, and I said, wow, that's kind of cool. Listening to that. Hey, Siri. I said, no. Siri's come up. I said, <laughs> Because <laughs> I did say, hey, Siri, forget it. Go away, Siri. I don't need you. Siri's on the ball today. <laughs> oh, she's on my iPad. Oh, now she's going to, sorry. I couldn't find that in your app, the music library. You can ask me to play a radio station or ask for your music on a different app. No, thank you. I won't. <laughs> we're, we're good. Careful, what you, careful what you say. Uh, to relax now, to, like today, I, I was listening to. Uh, uh, Joey Landreth, I, I, I think he's a great writer. He sounds a little bit like uh, in the school of uh, uh, Mayer and, uh, and, and Ariel Posen too. I, I'm trying to get into playing open slide now, so I'm listening to people like that. But my all time, if, if someone said, who would you take to a desert island? I would say Mark Knopfler. I, oh, I love one. Mark. 
I love Dyer Mark Street. Knopfler. I've been to see him five times. And he's even better on his own because he's gone Celtic. And with my background, I guess I, I like that, you know. Uh, every song is, is, is musical. Every song's different. He's very prolific in his writing. Uh, he does sings with so many different artists. If you had every Mark Knopfler album or anything he's ever done, you would have such a wide variety of, of, of sounds to listen to. You never get bored. Whereas right. if you took just, just, uh, uh, well, who, who would be just uh, Abba, you know, you'd be, you'd be, you'd be strangling yourself in a week. You know? right. <laughs> just with the, the first piano. <laughs> <laughs> All the ABBA fans are going to be commenting here any minute. <laughs> no, probably not. But we are getting some good comments in here, so I'm going to probably get to those. Uh, so Lance Hackwich is saying see you in Regina this summer or seeing you in Regina this summer. I'm assuming that's a misprint. We, you, yeah, that's uh, that's where we, yeah, we, we played Regina. We were? Yeah. Okay, so I think that's yeah. meant to say seen. Uh, Gary Jones, he was a good friend of the show, saying, uh, this is great, Kelly and Brian. Anything April Wine gives me a warm and fuzzy. They are top shelf. Early 70s from Hey Jude to Could Have Been a Lady, rock on. Oh, thank thanks. you. Thanks, Gary. Uh, Gordon Enright saying good evening from Toronto. Hi, Gordy. Uh, How are you doing, buddy? Do you know Gordon? Yeah. Yeah, right on. Yeah. Yeah. So Gordon says that he went to see April Wine every summer during the 80s at the CNE Grandstand and saw them last uh -huh. time in 2019. Love April Wine. Awesome. Uh, Jay Milner. Hi, Jay. Hi, Jay. Good to see you. Um, Cheers. Yeah, lots of comments coming in, which I kind of figured there would be. Uh, Gary saying, what an amazing story. So, oh, guess who's in the house? Who? <laughs> uh, oh, Richard Lamp here. Hi, Richard. <laughs> <laughs> Your cohort from April Wine. Hi, Richard. Thanks for joining yeah. us. <laughs> uh, yeah, Richard, we'll figure out that parking. We'll figure out that parking thing, Richard, for uh, <laughs> for Wednesday at the airport. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Right on. Lots of people in the house tonight. Uh, here's a question. Mark Holden Hall, who's actually a very talented local musician, wants to know how the how did he come up with the lead line in Gypsy Queen. Oh, the the solo. The I don't, Mark. Section, maybe, Mark. Maybe you about? could, maybe you could clarify that, Mark. What you mean? Yeah, because the the, the the da 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 that the the opening da 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 was the original uh, Lawrence Hud version had that on it. The uh, the solo was uh, was me working with Mike Stone in the studio for about three hours, and we finally put together a compilation of what I came up with. Because I don't really go in and and learn the solos or invent the solos before I, I, I play them. I'm more playing at, at the moment. And that's sort of what works for me rather than plan something of, okay, I'm going to start here and finish there. And Gary Moffat would do that and came up with great solos, but I always just went off the cuff. And so we took a bit of that, a little bit of this, a little dab of that, and then boop, it came out with the solo <laughs> and then you go and learn it. <clears throat> okay. So Mark said, yep, that's it. That's, that's what he was referring to. Uh, and yeah, yeah, it's an amazing job. So I had a question. Oh, thank you. Yeah, lots of fans in those. I knew there was going to be a lot of people popping in. Mark's just saying very cool. Thank you for answering that. Uh, Ed Schof is a good fan of the show and a friend of mine says, thank you for decades of great tunes, Brian Rock On. I could go on and on. But I do have a question for you, Brian. And, and I like to ask this question to get a perspective from the artist. So given someone as yourself who's, who's been around, you know, before technology exploded and then now, would you say right. technology has been a plus, like a hurt, a hindrance, or a plus for the music industry? In your opinion, well, that's a good that's a good question because technology sort of saved the industry many times from going from vinyl to cassette to uh, eight track to eight track cassette stereo. You know. Uh, <laughs> We got some furniture, you know, microwave ovens. You, know. <laughs> you so are a Mark Knopfler, Mark Knopfler yeah. theme, yeah. <laughs> and and then and then uh, the CDs, of course, and and then uh, and then streaming, uh, which is streaming. Like I, I, everything I own for music now, I, I get through my phone, 
and I guess I'm as guilty as anyone of, of listening to streaming music because uh, there's nothing like vinyl. And you would spend hours in the studio mixing and mixing and mixing to get it right. And people are listening to it in earbuds, which Harley is, 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 uh, is great sound. I mean, it's a lot better than the transistor radio was back in the 60s, but everything was in mono then. Technology, I don't know. It, it it's it, it it improved things how you record because now you can do non-destructive editing digitally, uh, multiple tracks. Uh, it made it so easy, but also you don't need a lot of talent in in places to to be a musician. You you, you just a little beatbox and your computer and auto tuning for your voice and the blood, sweat, and tears of writing seems to be very different from how it used to be, where you knew a song before you went into the studio and you'd rehearse it rather than, okay, all my demos here, now I'm gonna go in and record it. Uh, everyone does it different, but there's a lot of records out there to me that sound like they're written by one person and played by one person or put assembled by one person, designed in California, assembled in Montana or something, you know? It's not like the old days where you, you you sit there for hours working with tape and to get that track just perfect, knowing that you can't do it, do it, do it, because you don't have enough room on the tape to do it. So you really brought out your in, uh, aggressiveness to get it right, rather than, oh, okay, I can go all day. I've got kind of 5,000 tracks of this guitar solo to, or vocal or keyboard, and we'll just edit it down, you know. Good luck with that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I think there's pros and cons. I think, I mean, I'm glad for the technology. For example, I would not be doing this show, which, yeah, uh, that too. I'm, I mean, I used to do this show live for a local TV radio station. And then I only started this format when COVID hit. And so I'm grateful for some parts of it, but you touched on a few things there, Brian, that I think are actual cons. And I, and it is the fact that, you know, you mentioned, you know, anybody can be a musician now and anybody can just, um, and I think that's a real downfall for the industry because I, I miss the days when, you know, being in a well-known band was special and it was, you know, kind of rare. And it was this magical thing when you went to see them and, you know, to go to see a live concert, you know, to, in order to see your favorite band, you went to a concert, you know, and then of course, you know, much music and, and that sort of thing came out and then you could watch videos. But I think now there's just this, you know, this overwhelming surge of just music coming from everywhere, from everyone. And I, and I kind of miss the old days when, when there wasn't so much the technology. I well, it's all it seems to me around singers now, and it was like that in the fifties too, in the early sixties, and then bands start. I'm back, and then <laughs> bands started becoming started becoming you know popular, writing their own songs and. Uh, they put in hours to learn an instrument. Now, I don't think people are putting, I mean, people are, but I'm talking generally here. People are not putting in the hours to learn an instrument because that's where you're going to feel the song rather than, oh, a little keyboard here, a little that. And you can tell it on, on, on the radio nowadays, the top 20, I go, there's no music there. Right. You know, I, I don't listen to radio, hardly anything. First off, I hate commercials. I don't hardly watch TV for that. Thank God's for PVR. Right. And uh, and 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 Sirius XM or whatever that I listen to. Uh, I, I can't commercials just take me away because there's so many now. You, you you would have and they and they had a, a a system now they they could speed up the song without changing the tempo or the or the key to get that extra 30 to 60 seconds in the hour to get more advertising on radio. It just got too much technology that way. It, 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 with everything that's invented, it has a good side and a bad side. And usually the bad side always revolves around greed of making more money. Right. It, it always comes down to the dollar. It always does. Yeah. Well, that, that's the world we live in, you know, Right. And so do you um, feel, do you feel blessed, Brian? I, and I hope blessed is the right word, but grateful to have been part of the music industry back when, you know, there were places to go and cut your teeth. You could go out on tour. You, there was gigs everywhere. And if, and if you wanted to play, you went out and you, 
you know, you cut your chops and you learned your craft and you paid your dues. And, and it's not so much that way now for, uh, for upcoming people that want to get into this industry. And uh, we were talking before the show and, you know, I spent 20, 23 years on the road with a rock, rock band, you know, not, not getting anywhere, but doing what I love to do and, and doing it every night. And I kind of feel sorry for the upcoming generation that they, they really don't have that option. Do you have any advice for up and coming musicians that, that don't have that option, you know, of going out and just touring everywhere? Well, there used to be lots of places to play, you know, for up and coming musicians in, in, in the city I live in, uh, there's not as many places to play as there used to be. And if you do, you get paid about the same you got paid 30, 40 years ago. You know, there's still that, that, oh, they're a musician there. They're, they're not into money, you know, come, come and play my place. And maybe if you get a lot of people, I'll, I can pay you. you know? Well, yeah, if you're a plumber, right. come to my house and fix my pipes. And if you're good and my water runs, maybe I'll pay you too, you know? Yeah, right. Why, and, and, and downloading free music and uh, the whole streaming thing, we don't get paid hardly anything anymore for that. You know, you'd be, Zero point zero zero of a cent on a for a stream, uh, unless you're one of the large large artists, which there's you know a couple of handfuls of them every year, and they're 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 making serious money, and there's big tours making serious money. But if you're in our league or lower, uh, I mean we're doing okay. But to be young, starting off again, I mean people are are doing it. Look at Greta Van Fleet and, and 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 other bands like young bands like that. They're getting the attention of labels, and technology enables you to record that stuff at home and do your own album at home and put it on YouTube and get lots of views on it, which you couldn't do that before. You had to do a demo and try to sh shop it to various labels to get signed, hopefully, or at least somebody from A and R would come down and look at you. Right. And then you had to get a, then lawyers to, for contracts and this, and that still happens. But the law, the lawyers will always be there. But it, the music became more of a business than it was fun, you know. I would agree. I would agree. Yeah, and I think a big message is too to send out is to really support live entertainment. Support the live entertainment. Pay the cover charge. You know. There's there's no substitute. You know, I I I heard a story from somebody another musician so i don't know if it's true or not but <laughs> <laughs> could be just putting me on <laughs> but he, he he was he was with some people and then the other guy said oh yeah i'm a musician too and he says what do you play he says oh i'm a dj oh. says, you're a, a dj and, and you're a musician no you're not a musician you're i can't wait to hear this of, yeah. You're making money off of other people's songs. Sure, your talent is in the fact that you can invent something that is unique, like Dead Mouse or uh, some of the other large disc jockeys that can pack an arena, but it's not live music. Right. And that doesn't make it's, you a musician. I agree. It doesn't make you a musician. Yeah. No. It makes you, you can be talented I mean, at it, but you're definitely not a musician. Yeah, I mean, I can, I can change some pipes in the house, but I'm not a plumber, you know? <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, why not? So we have some more questions here, Brian. I'm just going to, Andy Christ, I think that is the coolest name ever. Andy Christ says, hey, Brian, what's your favorite guitar or piece of musical gear that you hold dear? Ooh. Well, I bought my Les Paul that's been on every April Wine album I've ever done, brand new, 50 years ago this month. Wow. For five hundred and fifty dollars from Steve's Music, a Les Paul custom, and I still have it. Um, geez, it's in the case somewhere. I get it out. I mean, I have my nice telly here, but oh, this cool. is this is this this is kind of sweet too. Can you play us a riff? <laughs> I can't play. <laughs> there, uh, well, thank you for that. <laughs> uh, you're welcome. <coughs> so, yeah. so, 
Maybe, maybe you'd like a, a song or something, you know. <laughs> Just, more, more cowbell. <laughs> <laughs> Needs more cowbell. <laughs> more skank <Yeah>. on it. <laughs> Right on. Yeah. Uh, hello to Medina Sebastian. He's just he's just raving that you're here, Brian. Happy yeah. to see you. But but, I, but for gear, but I'll answer this for gear. Uh, like that guitar, and I have a matching Strat. It's a custom shop which my wife bought me. Um, I love good instruments and 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 good pedals and 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 like tweed amplifiers. Now I, and I love tube amps, and I like to keep it low wattage amps with april wine is a 50 watt 100 watt amps but uh, you don't need that i like to get inquired learning how to play at a soft volume and get the sound you want is a real art you just don't use volume to get it and that's what i've been working on for the past three or four years it's a it's a real art i used to think oh I just turn everything up and that, that's how you get it <laughs> no it's in the hands and it's in the notes and compression is your friend because it sustains the notes you know right so i can't give away all the can't give away all the secrets all though. this all the trade secrets, my door eh? you know <laughs> yeah uh well andy i hope that answered your question uh todd cook hey todd ron hockey uh thanks brian for all the amazing songs you and the band put out over the years thanks todd no oh, thank you I have a question for you, Brian. If you could kind of go back in time, what advice would you give your younger self? Like knowing what you know now. Don't drink. That's good advice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I mean, the seventies. <laughs> Just say no. Was was a party, you know? It was a party. That was the party decade. Everybody was doing it up the nose and doing it down the throat and. You know what the favorite, you know what the most used word was in the 60s? What? <laughs> ear. Like? Ear. Ear. Boosh. <laughs> 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 yeah, but bucket of fish. <laughs> no, um, I, I would tell myself to learn the business more because so you don't get ripped off. Learn how to read. So you can do session work uh, and learn the music more uh, rather than just, okay, play by feel and play by ear is great. But to learn what music really is, is, is it, it, it's, it's a science, you know, I'm just, I'm just touching it. Just the more you learn, the more you realize what you don't know. Right. Yeah. 100%. I would agree. Uh, I would Sorry, I'm just going to Ed Schof is saying only us old schoolers remember the struggle of putting a chewed April wine on or any other cassette tape back together. <laughs> yeah, rough life. <laughs> well, the pencil, yeah. The, the pencil, pencil and the, the cassette, cassette right? right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, Brad Seibel is – hi, Brad. Good to see you again, buddy. He's saying uh, that Brian is an amazing guitar player. Here's another question for you. Um, what does the perfect day look like for you these days? How would you describe your perfect day? Because inquiring minds want to know this stuff. <laughs> oh, about 20 degrees and 55% humidity. <laughs> <laughs> um, perfect day. Not being, having no regrets would be a perfect day. Um, yeah. For some reason, I, I always think about things that I regret. And I go, oh, yeah, that's when I was drinking. That doesn't happen anymore. I don't have any regrets any since I quit drinking. It's not funny how that works, hey? We were talking about this before the show. It's funny yeah. how that works. Yeah, I think of, all. Oh, I, you know, I got really smashed and I did that. You know, yeah, drinking won't happen again, you know? Oh, I drove the car. I remember one night I drove home. I, I did 240K in the car. And I survived. And I, drinking... Yep, drinking, right? There's a saying, it's like, I didn't get into trouble no. every time I drank, but every time I was in trouble, I was drinking, right? <laughs> well, I, yeah, I sure had a lot of fun that I can't remember. Yeah. Well, you know, it kind of, you know, it seems to be part of the lifestyle and it happens to, you know, it creeps up on a lot of people. I don't think it's that way so much anymore. I think, I think the industry has kind of no. shifted where it's, it's just not the way it used to be. The seventies and eighties were I was on the road during that, not during the 70s, but during the 80s and 90s, and there was a lot of partying that went on. And I don't necessarily there think was. it's like today. I don't think it's the same anymore. I think, I think that's kind of. Well, gone I used away. to call it. 
I used to call it going on the road. I was like running away to join the circus. <laughs> you know, because you, you didn't have to answer your phone. You didn't have to go to the post office to get your mail. You didn't have any bills to pay because you weren't home to write the checks. Uh, everything was there for you if you wanted it. Of course. You know? Right. And, and there's lots of people that there were only too willing because they liked the band and they wanted status through proximity to buy you a drink or do this or have you that or whatever. And if you and you're away from home, you know, and it's strange city and you just and if you're gullible like I was, oh yeah, sure. <laughs> don't do <don't> do <laughs> Yeah, oh I'll do that. <laughs> well, and I think the other time thing is too is when you're on the road. Maybe not necessarily now when you're doing like arena shows, it's a lot. But back in those days, you're, you know, you're only expected on stage from nine until two, you know, and then you've got all day long. Yeah. And so it can really, it can really catch up with you. So good on you for packing that in. And, you know, I think that's going well, to inspire. Yeah. I mean, I, a lot of people died in the 27 club, the people that yeah. died in their 27 Um they're still being talked about, but I, God, what would it have been like if those people hadn't died? You know, right? Where would Hendrix be like if he was if he was seventy five? You know? Right. Good question. Would he be like Claptonus, an order, ornery old man? Sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you do an Eric Clapton impersonation too. <laughs> No, that was it. <laughs> oh my God, this has been an absolute slight. I I, la I don't think I've ever laughed so much even before the show started as the conversation we were having earlier. And and uh, I just can't, I seriously can't thank you enough for taking time, Brian, for being with You're us. Welcome, and I want, Kelly. And I want to know what's coming next for April Wine. Is there any... Is well, there like any I said, we, we have... Yeah, we, we're, we're, we're threatening to record another album. Um, there's always that threat, which means that we have to think about it. And I, I believe actually Miles is, is writing now and uh, demoing and we're hopefully we're going to do it over the winter. And technology will allow us to right. not, not do it at home and send in the parts, you know, because you can do that. And, and everyone's I've got a I've got a great little studio behind me here. You know, that, yes, you do. I don't know if you can see it. And, I can. Uh, I haven't got a drawer that pulls out. You know. <laughs> you're, you're high tech, Brian. <laughs> that's where I that's where I sleep. <laughs> it's, it's like a Murphy bed. You know? <laughs> oh, see, yeah. I've got a machine that goes bang. <laughs> yeah. Brian, is there concerts coming up? You you mentioned a few and a few coming up. <clears throat> Next Wednesday, we're in North Bay, Ontario. Uh, where I don't know, other than North Bay. Uh, then it's either Markham or Richmond Hill, Ontario. That on the Thursday, and then the Friday is one of those two. And then uh, the last show of the year is at uh, Casino Rama, November twelfth. And then that'll be kind of it for the winter and then back for the summer festivals next year, I would imagine. Yeah, I, I think we have a show in a really big show. A <laughs> really big really show. Right now. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, let's paper wine in our stage. <laughs> <laughs> We're following Topo Gijo. The yes, sir. <laughs> Not that many, okay. <laughs> I saw I saw Jonathan I saw Jonathan Winters and and Robin Williams once and I I said now that looks like fun you know right yeah well you're a natural my friend you're a natural Timmy uh, Timothy Koyak who's a great friend of the show is saying what a great hour you're being you are you're, <laughs> you're very entertaining Brian Greenway <laughs> oh thank you I, I'm just having fun you know it's it's it, they let me out of the home for the night and and and, and here I am <laughs> I, I, it's, I, I, I don't know what to say about it Mary I, re I really don't you know <laughs> it's most it's, 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 it's sort of a, a no can do you know? <laughs> right on and, and you know how cool that that Richard showed up so we have two members of April wine and yeah that's great. Uh, well, I, yeah, I, have, Marlene. I told my daughter, I told my daughter about the show and I told some other people I, I didn't know how to get to. I just said, et cetera, with Kelly Barrett, like the live, the vibe, live, the, live on the vibe, et cetera, live, et cetera, live. Yes. Yes. 
and it's on and i said stream yard so that was a good place to look you know? right and you've got gear you got all set up look great you sound great this has been an <laughs> <laughs> this is the first time i use it all. i wish i could show it like like well i can actually let me switch to this camera here you can see all, Check all it my out. stuff yeah. <laughs> and 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 there's you right there and, Hello, Kelly. How are you? Kelly? Are you? <laughs> Hi, Kelly. And and yeah, and I yeah, that's this. It's I'm learning how to do all this, you know. So maybe one day I can. Have do you want to show? Who knows? Have you want to show? It's time to show. Really big. Have a really big show. Absolutely. It'd be it's fun. I I love I love Brian. Brian Johnson show when he interviews people and it's it's just a lot of fun meeting you know going and talking to these guys and it, they, this Ronnie Wood it, the, the shows talk themselves through it you know it's just once you get guys talking about music it's you can't stop them it's it's you know like it's the best it's the best job ever to have a show like this and I have been so fortunate to meet like yourself some of all of my idols I've had just about everybody that I grew up worshiping on this show. And you know what I'm always surprised by? And this is the honest to God's truth. I was, I'm was i always surprised by how down to earth and candid and honest and friendly and lack of ego that comes along with the guests on this show. And I just, I couldn't be more grateful. It, our Canadian music industry really is full of some of the best people. They really are. Like there's truly, no room yeah. for there's no room for ego. You know, I, I had one early in my life, and then I decided I I saw people that are really good, and I said, okay, just be nice. Right. And, and I'm I've, I'm a shy person, really. That's that's the funny part. A lot of shy people are, are like me. They yeah, we can tell. We can tell. Oh, really funny. Are. Yeah. No, if you catch me, you know, in another room, I'll just be quiet and then, oh, and then uh, then get me started and look out. Right. Well, it's different when you're in your element. This is your element. And so. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I swear to God, I feel like we could just talk for hours. You know what I mean? And we probably, yeah, pr probably could. I'm, yeah, people miss work tomorrow because of that. Right. <laughs> Yeah. Right on. You know what, Brian? I, I'm going to let you go. I cannot thank you enough. You are delightful, Brian Greenway. You are welcome back anytime. Thank you, Kelly. I'd love to. Yeah. Yep. And so is Richard, yeah. by the way. Richard, you're welcome on the show. Yeah. Yeah. I, we'll have. We'll, we'll get everybody in here. And there, there can never be a shortage a, of April Wine members on this show. <laughs> well, if we had everybody that was ever in the band, there wouldn't be a shortage. <laughs> there would be a lot of windows, right? <laughs> Oh, look, <laughs> I, I haven't seen you in years. So. Right, yeah. <laughs> yeah. right on. Thank you so much, Brian. I do have to make one little announcement to the viewers because, and I was talking to you about this before the show, Brian, I do have two really good tickets for Brian Adams to give away. And so I had All a right. cost, yeah, I had a costume contest. Um, and however, as of airtime, when the show started, I had five that were tied, four or five, I can't remember, that were tied. And then I had to come on the air with Brian. So I won't be announcing the winner during the show as I promised, but oh, Mark Chican from Helix just popped in. <laughs> hi, hi, Mark. Mark is coming up as a guest here in a couple of weeks too. Good to see you, buddy. All right. Um, and hi, but but I will address I will address the contest after the show and let you guys help me choose the winner. Brian, thank you so much for taking time today to be with us. And and on behalf of everybody here, I know I speak for them when I say thank you and all the guys from Maple Wine for this providing all the songs that, I mean, literally were the soundtrack to our misguided youths. And now our misguided well, maturity. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks, Kelly. And thank you to everybody there that uh, that wrote in. And, and uh, we've got a consolation prize. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, everybody, for watching and, and, and commenting. And uh, I wish I could see the comments. Uh, but I've had a, a great time tonight with everyone. Thank you so much, Kelly. Right on. Thank you for being here, Brian. Take care. Stay safe and sane. And hopefully we will see you again very soon. Okay. Bye for okay. now. Bye-bye. Thanks, everybody, for bye -bye. watching. I'm Kelly Barrett. This is Etc. Have a great week. Until we see you next week, stay safe and sane. I will be uh, uploading pictures on Facebook immediately after the show, and we're going to pick ourselves a winner for those Brian Adams tickets. So until we see you then, take care. Stay safe and sane. We'll see you soon.